back everyone. So last episode, we completed sanding on the bowler body, but now we have to do the door. So a lot of damage on the body was done by me. And if you saw last episode, you'll see that I had a lot of body filling and fixing to do from sanding too deep. Now I'm not gonna point any fingers, but all I can say is luckily, I am not the culprit of this door. So we are going to be fixing the sanding mistakes, I guess, of the previous person, or maybe three people ago, who knows. But somebody came in here with a sander and it's not a pretty sight. So there are divots and huge scratches and damage, and there are areas that there used to be hardware that hardware has been moved, removed. It's not pretty. I had a really hard time trying to remove this door handle. I even YouTubed it and did see a couple of applicable YouTube videos, but this little area right here is seized and it's just, it's not gonna work. So what I'm going to do is I am going to, unfortunately have to leave this handle on. I will also add a second lock because I like to sleep well at night and apparently having a German Shepherd and one lock is not enough. So I'm going to be cleaning up all of these holes and then I will add a secondary lock on the exterior and a secondary lock on the interior. So not removing the handles, but I also will not be removing this window. This is the only window during this restoration that I will leave in. And the reason is because it looks so hard to reinstall. It's not a beautiful window. If replacements were readily available online, I would go that route and remove it and put a new one in. But the glass is not damaged. It is just the aluminum border, I guess, that is damaged. So I'm just going to try to clean up around it, maybe buff this thing up a little bit. And we're, we're not gonna dive in too heavily to this window. Let's just pick our battles. So with that, let's get started. fill all these holes now. Let's make this smooth. So I'm just using one of the tiles that I thought I was gonna use in the bowler and decided not to. Came with the bowler and to me, they're just really convenient disposable mixing trays. And I want this to harden up pretty quickly. I had one batch that didn't harden up fully when I was working on the body. So now I'm quite liberal with the hardener because taking that all off was a, a really challenging task. I had it actually on several parts of the bowler and I had to basically sand it off, but it was still not cured. So it was just chewing through sanding discs. So I probably used 10 sanding discs getting that off. Really incorporated. Okay. We must act fast. We'll work over here. While it's nice and runny, it's good to get it in the tiny little crevices. And then it sort of gets a little thicker and you can still use it to smoothen out the body. And I'm going to leave quite a bit of excess because it sands off smoother that way. And I don't want to spend a lot of time doing numerous applications and waiting for it to cure. We're doing it this way. That was a really bumpy patch. I also like to just smush it in with my fingers. This is my last body filling task of this project. So I've developed a little bit of technique that works for me. Just looking for big areas. Getting a little bit thicker now. So, I'm just gonna let this cure up and I'm gonna add a little bit more into these divots. And then we'll flip this handle around and do the other holes on the other side. It's getting quite hard.
So this is where we're at. I filled in all of the gashes and smoothed it out a lot. A lot of the gashes I actually just smoothed out, but then these ones were so deep I needed to body fill them. And put some filler on the handle, of course. Filled in these holes all along the sides here. And so that is ready now to be actually properly mounted on this side. I have to do the same on the other side. But yeah, once again, looks like, just like me, looks the worst it's gonna look. But after one coat of paint, it'll be so transformative. And then after everything, I, I really hope that it just looks brand new. Just standing beside this bowler and having all of these bumps show and last night I went over the bowler with a flashlight just on an angle to really see bumps and things and it is it's a little bit discouraging seeing it in this state for so long and working on it for so long and there were still bumps last night when I checked with the flashlight and that was it was really discouraging and it made me want to obsess over it and like keep going and just keep sanding but there's not going to be any bowler left if I keep sanding so so I am leaving it at that. No task that I think is gonna be just a small task is small. This took a few hours. So, it is now ready to be painted, thankfully. Here we are. So filled in some big gashes here and cleaned up the holes from all of the attempted installations of whatever hardware, I'm guessing, and I, I don't know. <laughs> But now uh, this is solid all the way through for the most part, so that can get screwed in properly. And buffed this out so it's nice and shiny. And I thought that that's best to do before I paint. And got a piece of sandpaper stuck in there and I cannot get it out. I'm gonna have to get some pliers. You guys, should we paint? I'm just gonna leaf blow this and tape up the windows. Then let's do it. It is time. All I did was nothing. Nobody move too fast. Nobody make any dust. Now, microfiber, tape up windows.
time. Okay, the sun is about to set and I have to put my first coat of primer on because the primer apparently is supposed to sit for about 12 hours before the next coat goes on. <laughs> I'm losing my mind, you guys. <laughs> so I was thinking, ah, oh, should I just do this tomorrow? No, we do it tonight. Okay, we don't have much light and I have to make this whole gallon last, which the man at the store said for sure it's enough, but I feel like I have to make haste. So let's get to it. 